Hi, my name is Stacy. Today I'm standing on the edge of a beautiful and quite remarkable lake. This is Lake Victoria, one of the major water storages in the Murray-Darling Basin. The lake is situated in far southwest New South Wales, near the borders of Victoria and South Australia. And it is not far from the junction of the Murray and Darling rivers. However, unlike many other water storages in the basin, this lake is situated in an arid area and is quite remote. There is no large town or major highway close by. And why is this lake so important? Let's go and ask Steve McGlashan all about it. The lake is about 8 kilometres by 14 kilometres, which is, gives it an effective area of about 112 square kilometres. Uh, it's got a storage capacity of about 680 gigalitres. When it was first identified in the early 1900s to be a water storage for South Australia, they needed to utilise it fully and they uh, built 52 kilometres of levees and block banks to double the storage of the lake. It's part of the, the Murray-Darling Basin regulation, which includes Hume Dam, Dartmouth Dam and Ninny Lakes. And it's very important in the system to the Murray-Darling Basin Authority because they actually sort of call it the wicket keeper as any rain events below Menindi or Albury, this is the only place they can catch it. Yeah, Lake Victoria is very unique. It's, they've got the densest Aboriginal culture in the country. Uh, we also need to use it as a water storage. Uh, there's also social issues. Uh, we need to manage it for vegetation, soil erosion and salinity. In the early days, the lake would primarily be full all the time, but now we vary the lake quite wildly sometimes to promote revegetation and uh, limit soil erosion. We've got uh, evidence here that uh, dates back for Aboriginal occupation up to 45,000 years. When the uh, European settlers came here, to, uh, basically around here, they used it for livestock. In the early 1900s, it was a part of the river regulation and uh, it was identified as a storage of South Australia. And in 1994, they lowered the lake to do some maintenance on the outlet regulator and they discovered all the Aboriginal culture heritage after the water had been sloshing around for 80 years. After they discovered all the uh, Aboriginal culture here, they did an, a thing called an EIS, which is an Environmental Impact Statement. We now have a uh, cultural heritage monitoring program, which is the most advanced in the country, where we have a data system and we've recorded all the known barrels around Lake Victoria. And uh, twice a year we uh, do monitoring and take photos and updates and any uh, barrels that have been uh, degraded by natural elements, uh, like wind and rain and um, uh, also pests. Uh, we have a, a maintenance program that we go around and uh, make sure that those burials uh, have been protected. Our main goals are to, uh, it's a balancing act for water management, if, number one, and while we're doing that we need to look after the environment and vegetation, soil erosion and all the time uh, protecting the burials to make sure that uh, our activities don't damage any Aboriginal culture heritage and we have lots of um, practices to minimise that. The burial protections that, that have gone out here uh, and the amount of re regrowth in the vegetation is just amazing and it's 20 years ago around Lake Victoria there was a blade of grass and all the trees were dead and, and now it's all coming back and it's just great and uh, we've got lots of strategies and to enhance the environmental landscape out here and we've got lots of dedicated people and and we do that in uh, with the in hand in hand with the Aboriginal community protecting the Aboriginal culture and and the environment <laughs>